Today's video is brought to you by Surfshark VPN, your ultimate online protection. More about them later. Something in your refrigerator is going to murder you. We'll tell you which food it is tonight at 11. Now, that's probably a statement you've heard a thousand times in advertisements for local news. Many of these segments contain information from new and unverified studies or rely on a person using something in a manner in which it's not intended. For example, did you know that an everyday object like a toaster can be fatal if you drop it into a bathtub when it's plugged in? It's shocking, we know. It's also not the sort of thing that's likely to come up in everyday life. and unless you really like toast while you bathe. Instead of this sensationalized fear-mongering, what we're gonna do today is engage in some more rational fear-mongering by examining the hidden dangers presented by everyday objects when they're actually used as they're intended to be used. No toaster required. Before we get to the myriad of household objects that could kill you, first let's discuss a product with a lesser known danger. Toothpaste. Toothpaste is obviously not food, and issues can arise from swallowing large amounts of it, such as stomach pain and even intestinal blockage. Lovely. But even when used properly, there is another danger from toothpaste. Pyrophosphates. These are compounds that commonly appear in toothpaste in the form of calcium, disodium, and tetrasodium pyrophosphates. Not all toothpastes contain them, but if they do, they're generally listed in the inactive ingredients. Pyrophosphates began being used in toothpaste as a way to block tartar from forming. Though they do work, there's a bit of a downside as well. Your saliva is full of calcium that is used to remineralize your teeth, but pyrophosphates can disrupt this process. That can result in decalcification, which tends to lead to high sensitivity in teeth. When this happens, it isn't dangerous per se. It doesn't mean the tooth is rotting or unhealthy or anything like that. It just causes extreme sensitivity and pain from foods or liquids that are hot, cold, or sweet. Despite pyrophosphates having been used in toothpaste for over 50 years now with increasing popularity, there's very little research regarding the negative effects of pyrophosphates. This potential danger has been known about for decades, yet it's only been recently the scientists began looking seriously at whether the benefits of using these compounds outweigh the negatives. While the pyrophosphates found in toothpaste may not be deadly, if you'd like to avoid the pain and discomfort of sensitive teeth, it may be best to avoid toothpastes that use them. So, do you want to keep your online activity private and secure? No, Simon, I'd love it broadcast to the world. <laughs> It's an obvious answer that it is no, and you can keep yourself private online with Surfshark VPN. It covers everything you do online, helping keep you safe and private, and the best part, you can even travel the world with it in one click. And what does that allow you to do? Well, let's just say if you're a bit bored of your Netflix selection, why not jump over to another country? You'll find that they have a different Netflix selection. Maybe they have even different streaming services that you can enjoy. Uh, that you couldn't enjoy in your own country. It's pretty amazing stuff. You can say goodbye to FOMO for good. Also, I don't know, maybe you live in a country where they block stuff. <laughs> that's unpleasant, but get around it with Surfshark VPN. And that's not even mentioning the security. If you're in a cafe and there's that Wi-Fi, you connect to it, you think it's safe, it might not be safe, especially if it doesn't have a password on it. But if you fire up Surfshark, you'll be fine because it encrypts all of your data. Plus, Surfshark has a kill switch feature that'll disconnect you from the internet if your VPN connection drops for any reason. With 3,200 servers in 100 countries, GPS spoofing on Android and multi-hop, Surfshark has got you covered. Plus, they have a no-logs policy, which means they won't collect your data no matter what. And if you want to take your online security to the next level, they offer add-on security stuff like Surfshark Alert, Antivirus, and Search. They've also got a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Head to surfshark.deals forward slash side projects and use the code side projects for 83% off and three months for free. And now let's get back to today's video. <laughs> You might be aware of the chemical bisphenol A, or BPA for short. It is an industrial chemical used to make certain plastics or resins, but unfortunately it's also toxic. BPA is an endocrine disruptor, meaning that it interferes with the way that your body's hormones work. There are numerous health risks associated with BPA, including risks to a developing fetus, behavioral changes in children, increased blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, breast cancer, and prostate cancer. Deep breath. Now, the reason you might be aware of BPA is they made headlines in 2010 when the FDA banned the use of BPA based plastics and resins in the manufacturing and packaging of baby bottles, sippy cups, and baby formula. It was a big win for child safety as infants and children can suffer toxic effects of the chemical even at extremely low doses. Removing BPA from anything that goes near a person's mouth does seem like a logical step to solve this problem, but unfortunately, 
It's actually not enough. BBA can be absorbed through the skin, and receipt paper is absolutely covered in the stuff. Many receipts are printed on thermal paper because it allows for much quicker printing and instant drying. Not just receipts, but plane tickets, movie tickets, and more are often printed using thermal paper. Canned foods used to use BPA in their linings, but intense public pressure has resulted in most of them finding alternatives. And that's great, but a single receipt was found to contain 250 to 1,000 times as much BPA on it than was found in a can. Now, there are conflicting reports on exactly how much exposure is safe, but current FDA guidelines state that 50 micrograms per kilogram of body weight per day is the maximum safe level of exposure. It's unlikely that most people will reach that limit, but with the average receipt containing more than 50 micrograms of BPA, a person who handles a lot of receipts each day could easily risk exceeding that limit. Now, it's hard to say if, in the year 2023, mothballs still count as an everyday object or not. I couldn't even possibly tell you what they look like, but you can certainly buy them at any major store, so we're just gonna say that, yeah, they're around enough. Mothballs are little balls of chemicals that you can place with clothing that has been put in storage to help keep moths and other insects that might want to eat your fabric away. But as anyone that has ever used them can tell you, the mothballs disappear over time. Now, the reason the balls disappear is because they're generally made from either naphthalene or paradichlorobenzene, with naphthalene being by far the most common choice. These chemicals are solids at room temperature, but they also have high vapor pressure, and that causes them to sublimate. Uh, that's all just a fancy science big brain way of saying that they'll turn from solid to vapor over time without melting. How quickly this happens depends on the number of mothballs used and the temperature and the amount of airflow, but when it does happen, Happen, it can be surprisingly dangerous. These vapors are toxic to humans and could quickly result in headaches, nausea, dizziness, and vomiting. This is also suspected to be a carcinogen. Fortunately, with the exception of the possible carcinogen effects, the effects of inhaling this vapor seem to be temporary. It has long been established that alcohol is both the cause of and solution to all of life's problems. Most hand sanitizer is alcohol-based, either using ethanol or isopropyl alcohol. Alcohol kills pretty much everything, so these products are safe and effective. However, in 2020, when hand sanitizer suddenly became a harsh commodity that stores couldn't keep in stock, the market began being flooded with cheap imitation hand sanitizers that use methanol. Methanol is extremely toxic, and even ingesting small amounts can cause permanent damage or even death. Generally speaking, it is safe to eat food with your hands after using hand sanitizer and letting it dry. Because that's the case, someone using hand sanitizer made with methanol would not think twice before potentially ingesting the dangerous chemical. And even if they didn't, it can still be absorbed through the skin. Methanol was already known to be extremely toxic, and the FDA stated that it was not an acceptable ingredient in any hand sanitizer. To get around this pesky little restriction, though, the manufacturers of these products would just lie on the bottles, claiming they were made using ethanol instead, because apparently that's okay. Fortunately, this is not a huge problem anymore. The demand for hand sanitizer has subsided to normal levels, and production is once again able to meet demand. However, some of these methanol-based hand sanitizers have still continued to crop up from time to time. If you're purchasing a product, make sure it's made by a massive brand in the industry like Purell. That way, you shouldn't have anything to worry about. But if you ever find yourself at a store and the only hand sanitizer they have are a bunch of brands that you've never heard of, it may be a good idea to pull out your phone and make sure none of them are on the FDA's list of products known to contain methanol. Bleach is one of the most common and effective cleaners used across the world. It's also famously dangerous when used incorrectly. You should obviously never drink bleach, and mixing it with ammonia releases toxic gases. Most people know that you should absolutely never do either of these things. But what about when bleach is actually used properly? Well, it's actually a bit more complicated, and the results are a bit paradoxical. For people who used bleach for cleaning in a professional environment, meaning they were likely using it for five days a week for extended periods of time, there was a notable increase in respiratory symptoms. But when it's used at home for cleaning rather than professionally, the results are both different and also the same. 
Homes that were cleaned with bleach multiple times each week seemed to reduce the effects of allergies on the occupants. Not only was the bleach likely rendering the allergens inactive, thus preventing a reaction to the allergens, but it may completely prevent many allergies from developing in children as well. However, while allergy symptoms decreased, non-allergy related respiratory symptoms and asthma increased. So frequent cleaning with bleach can reduce respiratory irritation from allergies while simultaneously increasing respiratory symptoms that aren't related to allergies. This just leaves the question of whether or not is a net positive or not, and, well, that's still a bit of an open question, but you should still clean your house. Previous research had focused on bleach used professionally rather than domestically, so more research on the potential dangers of cleaning with bleach at home needs to be done. In most cases, it seems like the effects are overall a negative, but only time and research is going to tell. Numerous books have been seen as dangerous at various points through history. There were fears that the harmful messages included within the book's text could poison the minds of impressionable youths, stripping them of their morality and replacing it with whatever ideology was deemed unacceptable at the time. But the danger we're talking about today is nothing so philosophical. It's not the words printed on the pages that are a threat, it is the ink used to print them that poses a very real physical danger. There are strict laws regarding lead content in ink or paint, limiting them to 90 parts per million. But these extremely strict regulations were put into place over time, meaning that older books might still have dangerous lead contents. Well, hold on a minute, I'm not some sort of antiquarian book collector, those old books are not everyday objects, Simon. But think about the books that you read as a child. Was every children's book you had brand new, or were most of them some that had belonged to your parents that may have been since passed down to your own children? Especially when it comes to children's books, it's very common for families to pass books down from one generation to the next, and the books don't even have to be that old. Anything printed before 1978 risks having high levels of lead, and the older the books get, the worse it becomes. An article published in the New York Times in 1973 discussed what was then a recent study citing books as a significant source of lead poisoning in children. At the time, 5,000 ppm was considered acceptable for lead despite well exceeding modern standards, but they had concerns about books from the 1950s and earlier. How much lead was found varied based on the color of the ink. Glossy pages also were larger offenders as they used more ink, and hardcover books with painted covers were obviously the most dangerous. The study that was published in the medical journal Clinical Pediatrics found that the most toxic combination was yellow ink on glossy pages, which contained 29,000 ppm of lead. I may be thinking that the problem could easily be solved by not letting kids eat books. And indeed, that 1970s study did focus on pages being eaten by children. However, there's another concern that has more recently come to light, and that's lead dust. This forms over time and is most likely to be a concern with hardcover books with painted covers. Now, when this dust forms, the pages essentially act as a magnet, trapping it all on the page. Lead dust on books is dangerous, and not only because it's invisible to the naked eye, but because of aerodynamics. When you open a book, it creates upward air currents that will carry the dust directly towards your mouth and nose. The books can be cleaned to remove any lead dust, just make sure that you find instructions on how to do this properly so as to not accidentally poison yourself with lead. Now, if we go back even further, books can become even more dangerous. But while there's a good chance that you could have books in your home that you didn't know contained lead ink, it's very unlikely that you would have any books from the mid-19th century containing green paint made from arsenic lying around. Around 2007, CFL, or Compact Fluorescent Lamp Light Bulbs, became all the rage. They were heavily promoted for how energy efficient they were, and for a period of time it looked like the normal incandescent light bulb that we grew up with was going to become a relic of the past. But these CFL bulbs carried within them a danger. It wasn't really a hidden danger, it was pretty well publicized, but the bulbs contained mercury, which is highly toxic to humans. Under normal use, this wouldn't be a concern. However, light bulbs have a tendency to break, and a broken CFL bulb would release toxic mercury vapor. Now, they still might have been okay, except for one thing that nobody seemed to consider. The average person couldn't be bothered to dispose of them properly. When given the choice between taking a bunch of extra steps or just tossing them in the trash while thinking, eh, it's one live bulb, it won't make any difference, most people are going to do the latter. Such a decision may not have caused that person any harm, but it became a serious danger both for the sanitation workers and the environment as a whole as these bulbs broke inside garbage trucks and landfills. While it once looked like these light bulbs were going to become the new household 
standard. Instead, many states and countries have begun enacting bans on them and phasing them out entirely. And with that said, after the break, we'll be back with a look at sports and Crazy Jim's weather report. So stay tuned to find out what food item in your refrigerator is trying to murder you. Thank you.